What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now we are only going to be doing one video today, and that video is going to be the final fate of the Hellions. Issue number 18, and this will be the final issue for the Hellions line. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on with the Hellions in this new X-Men era. Now, what we have seen transpire is Orphan Maker being hurt by the lack of attention from Nanny. Because Nanny was preoccupied with the AI Smiley Robot Baby. And when the right came to collect this infant child and take it away from Nanny, we see Nanny lash out at Orphan Maker. Feeling horrible about the situation, Orphan Maker takes it upon himself to go storm the base and rescue the baby. But in all of the chaos, Orphan Maker accidentally kills two human bystanders. And with one of the fundamental laws of Krakoa being broken, the Hellions now need to stand trial. And so with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so with this issue, we are picking up at the Quiet Council in Krakoa. And everyone on the council, they knew this day would come. The day when they have to sit and judge their other mutants. Because the humans must know that the laws of Krakoa are taken seriously. That you're not just giving amnesty to those that would do harm to other nations. Now Nightcrawler, he really does have an issue with this because Orphan Maker is technically a child. And Mystique brings up that he may be stunted, but he is neither biologically or psychologically a child. And so now the council must stand and make a decision what to do with the Hellions. What will be their punishment for their crimes? And that's what picks us up a little bit earlier. With the Hellions arriving back on Krakoa, only to be met by Cyclops and some other X-Men ready to put Orphan Maker under arrest. Now Cyclops asks if Orphan Maker has been restrained. And of course Psylocke, she doesn't want to do that. They all love Orphan Maker and right now Orphan Maker is terrified. This was an absolute accident. He didn't intend on killing those humans. And so now Cyclops believes at least for appearances, the Orphan Maker, he needs to be in shackles. And the Hellions, they really want everyone just to take a step back. Let everyone calm down from this situation. Let Orphan Maker calm down a little bit. But at the end of the day, Cyclops says this is an international incident. One that needs to be handled with all eyes on it. Cyclops just isn't willing to work with them even in the slightest bit. With Psylocke just wanting some reassurance that he is not going to end up in the pit. And Scott can't even give that small reassurance. And this is where Grey Crow, he snaps. He loses it and he punches Cyclops right in the freaking face. And it doesn't take long for Wild Child to jump into the mix. Jumping at Wolverine, that's where Sync jumps into play. And we are having an all-out brawl between the X-Men and the Hellions. The Hellions not wanting to give up Orphan Maker, at the very least, they want him treated with some kind of dignity. They don't want him treated as if he is a prisoner. Because while these may be the misfits of all of Krakoa, together as the Hellions, they have formed their own bonds, their own little family, and they will do whatever it takes to protect one another. With Grey Crow going full force at Cyclops, this situation is getting pretty freaking sticky. With Polaris calling in a plan B, this is where we see the arrival of Empath. Empath who has been secretly working with Emma Frost this entire time. And he uses his powers and abilities to mitigate this situation and calm everyone down. Calm them down long enough so they can all be put into chains and stand before the Quiet Council. And so with this trial being underway, of course Sinister is the first one to have anything to say. Because if it were up to him, 
every single one of the Hellions would get thrown into exile. And of course, Magneto has to question this. And, and say, you know, why are you trying to condemn every single one of them to exile? And he lets them all know, or reminds them, that they harbored a robot AI that was hellbent on the destruction of Krakoa. And for this crime, he believes that they all need to be exiled for this. And Sinister, walking up to Psylocke, he makes a very smirking comment about how she sees herself as a fit mother, but she sits here in shackles. And as he looks down, he recognizes that her shackles are no longer there. And Psylocke, she punches the crap out of Sinister. Now Charles, he first says that we are going to have order. We're not going to have this going on here. That you are going to respect the laws of Krakoa. That even if you are a great captain, you will not be given leeway. And that's when Storm and a few others of the council, they, they tell Charles, let her have one more. Let her get one more good one in. And with Sinister down on the ground, she goes over and she punts his face like a freaking football. And this straight up just knocks all of his fronts out. With him bleeding all over the place, teeth missing. He is asking why everyone is just standing by as, as a member of the Quiet Council is getting the crap beat out of him. Saying to send them all to the pit, send them all to exile right now. Emma Frost telling him that his opinion, it is duly noted. But if he doesn't shut up, that they are going to muzzle him for the rest of this encounter. And that's what takes us to a little bit later. With Sinister currently muzzled up and Magneto dueling out punishment. Letting them know that after a lengthy and fair investigation, they have found that Orphan Maker acted alone in killing those two innocent humans. And since Orphan Maker has committed the highest crime in Krakoa, he has killed humans in cold blood, with him having absolutely nothing to say for himself. As punishment is about to get dueled out, this is where we hear a voice telling everyone to wait. That voice being Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler being one of the few individuals to really stick up for Orphan Maker. Letting them know that the Hellions, they are some of the most important individuals that are on Krakoa. And it's not because of their powers or their abilities or their task of getting missions taken care of. They are a symbol of the fact that they don't need to dispose of any mutants that they find bothersome. That Krakoa is at home to all mutants regardless of who they are. With Nightcrawler seeing Orphan Maker's violence as a sickness that needs to be healed and not a punishment where he needs to be locked away. And as long as he has a voice on this council, he will consistently put that vote towards compassion. Now both Charles and Eric, they take this under advisement but at the end of the day, there is no society without laws. With him being found guilty, Xavier lets him know that he will be sentenced. Now the Hellions, they are not happy about this. Grey Crow saying that he is simply just a boy. But Xavier reminds them that he has had the body and mind of a man ever since Arako. And so, the sentence is exile. Now Grey Crow at this point, he is losing his crap saying that he is going to burn all of Krakoa to the ground. Psylocke telling him that this isn't helping anyone. You acting irrationally is not going to help Orphan Maker right now. And we see all of the Hellions, they come in and they hug him. All of them with tears in their eyes. Grey Crow telling him to keep his chin up, that they will get him out of there no matter what it takes. And as they have this heartfelt moment, this is where we have the entrance of Nanny. Nanny coming in and letting them know that you are going to set my boy free and you are going to do it right now. Now Nanny was only resurrected so that they could try Nanny for the AI robot that she brought onto the island. But Nanny doesn't know what happened after those events. And this is where the Quiet Council 
fills Nanny in on exactly what transpired. That Orphan Maker went to the facility, massacred a crap ton of individuals, and ended up killing two innocent civilian bystanders. And so with Nanny taking in all of this information, everything that she did not know about, she immediately knows that Orphan Maker will be going to the pit. And with that, she says that she will be going with him. Now, both Magneto and Xavier, they tell her that they do appreciate the gesture, showing that you care so much for Orphan Maker. But at the end of the day, this is not your decision to make. And the pit will be Orphan Maker's fate and his alone. And this is where Nanny gets super real with all of them tells them all that they need to listen and they need to listen closely because she is Peter's nanny and he will not go into that dark hole alone telling them that they can stay out of the way or they can watch mouths agape as nanny slays as many human beings as it possibly takes for nanny to go down into the pit with orphan maker saying that nanny will sail on a sea of human blood if that's what it takes looking over to kate pride and saying how about i start with terry giving the address and kate pride just like what it, why like i didn't even do anything to you like leave my mom out of this but right now, Nanny is blaming all of them because they sit there while a ward of Nanny's is cast into darkness and any of them daring to think that Nanny would let them do this journey alone, saying that she has failed Orphan Maker once, she will not let it happen again. And so the Quiet Council, they all agree to let Nanny go in, with Cypher letting Krakoa know that it is time. We see the exile of both Nanny and Orphan Maker. As Nanny sings to Orphan Maker, they both get sucked down into the earth. And with that, the trial is over. The rest of the Hellions, they are free to go. But now the Hellions, they are broken. They will never be whole again. And, and most of them don't even want to stay on Krakoa anymore. And in the days to come, we will see Empath reunited only to realize very quickly that the Hellions may have been the only family that he ever had. And so while he plays it off really well, that he was working for Emma, that he had the upper hand, that he's just playing his cards right, at the end of the day, he feels like an absolute P.O.S. for what he did to the only friends that accepted him for who he was. The only ones that stood by his side and didn't judge him. And the only way Empath can get people to be nice to him now is if he uses his powers on them. Now, off in the distance a little bit, this is where we see Grey Crow with a rifle and he is ready to take out Empath for everything that he did, for the part that he played in all of this. Grey Crow let him know that if he messed up one more time, it would be the last time. Grey Crow more than willing to go to the grave, go into the pit for this one. And that's where he gets stopped by Psylocke. Psylocke telling him that this isn't the answer. That Krakoa is not asking you to not do this. That I am. I am pleading with you not to get yourself sent into the pit. And so for the moment at least, Grey Crow, he stands down. And we pick up in the healing gardens. Inside the healing gardens, we have Wild Child. And for the longest time, he has not been taking this medication that will really docile him. But what we are seeing is Wild Child has finally been broken with the only family that he has had on this island being separated, being broken apart. We see that Wild Child becomes the docile little puppy. He takes his pills, he lays down, and Wild Child will never be the same again. And that's what takes us to Cyclops and Havoc. The two brothers sitting down having a discussion. And right now, Havoc, he is just completely beaten up about this new Hellions team being broken up in the way it was. But there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Or at least he believes so. Because Emma Frost, she did something for him working on this Hellions team. They went out of their way to do something nice for him. Or so it is believed 
that they did something nice for him. And we see Havoc walking into a room. And walking into the room, this is where he is met by Madeline. With him being enthralled that she is back, with them all letting her know that she is allowed to stay here, he could not be more excited to see her. And with him making his exit out of the room as she starts to get dressed, she looks at herself in the mirror, and what we see is the Goblin Queen. Because the Goblin Queen has made her return. This was the ploy from Emma Frost. Now we are not sure how this is going to end up playing out in the long run, but we can only assume the ramifications that are going to unfold as this story progresses. Now obviously it won't be the Hellions line where this story continues on, but this is where we pick up with Emma Frost and Magneto. Both of them discussing Sinister, discussing Nathaniel Essex, saying that he is nothing more than a cancer to Krakoa and they are going to ensure they do everything they can to ensure that cancer has been removed. And working in the background is Sinister, having his plans, having his fingers into the captains. It appears that he has something much bigger at play. Not really sure what his work is going to be, not really sure what he is up to. We can only assume that it is sinister in nature. And as we close out this issue, we have Grey Crow and Psylocke sitting on a beach. Both of them just thinking about everything that has happened, everything that they have lost, the people that they care about, the ones that they love. But more than anything, Grey Crow loves the way that Psylocke looks at him. Because she looks at him as if there is good inside of him. Which makes him believe that there is good inside of him. And so maybe, just maybe, there can be a new tomorrow. And as the sun sets, we see the two of them hold hands. And that will be the end to the Hellions. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. The Hellions has been arguably my favorite line from the X-Men. So I am extremely sad to see it go. But I am not upset in the way they did it. Seeing both Orphan Maker and Nanny go down into the pit. We have the revival of the Goblin Queen. We're seeing Wild Child, a docile puppy dog. And Grey Crow, Crow and Psylocke are finally more or less an item. So if you were going to end this series, I really think this was the best way that you could do it. Arguably some of the best writing to come out of Marvel Comics this year. Hellions has absolutely killed it with almost every single issue. Now we have a whole new lineup of X-Men stuff coming next year. I don't have the, the, the list right on me currently. But we have a whole new lineup of brand new lines coming out. We got a whole bunch of X-Men lines that are going to be coming to an end. And so it looks like this stage of Krakoa is finally coming to its peak. And we are going to see what comes next. What is next for Krakoa? What is next for our members of the Hellions? What is next for all of mutant kind? With Nimrod on the horizon. With Orcus working with great effort to take down mutant kind. It seems like it's only a matter of time before mutant kind collapses. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor. Hit the sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.